to the reunion in Jesus. And you know, the Bible says he sets the solitary in families. And one of the works of grace that God does is to bring people together. You know, we're in a world where everybody's getting knocked apart. You know, there's so much polarisation going on in our nation. We're coming up to a, a general election. And no matter what the result is going to be, there are going to be a lot of people having their nose out of joint. Because, you know, the thing that we need in this land, the cement that holds everything together, no matter who gets into power, seems to be forgotten. And that cement is the Lord. We need the Lord. People need the Lord. They need God. And when we forget God, we forget the very reason for our lives. Praise God. Well, we're on to, I see I'm on to my sermon already. How did that happen? <coughs> Somebody pressed a button. Praise God. Let's have a wee word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your goodness to our lives. Help us to grow as Christians, Lord. Sometimes we're not very eloquent in what we're trying to say. But Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you look down into our hearts and you see where we are at. And we ask, Lord, that you'll bless your people and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to read the scripture. We did read it this morning, but, uh, but we're looking at it in a different way. This morning we were looking at Timothy, and we're looking at how Christ is presented as the pre-existent eternal one to Timothy. And we were looking at it in terms of his attitude to uh, the teaching regarding how the church should be governed. And behind the teaching and behind the practice was an attitude. An attitude was based on the reality that the Christ who was calling them to serve them was actually the one who dwelt in immeasurable light, the immortal, invisible, and eternal one. That makes all the difference when you realize you're serving God, you're serving the real God, the powerful, eternal God, not just an image of God in your mind. And Timothy was reminded of this. And one of the phrases that was used in Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 is a, a statement that Paul made to this young fellow who was training a, to, in leadership in the church. And he says to Timothy, Timothy, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, <clears throat> Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Lord bless us as we consider this scripture. Help us to take something from this place, Lord, that stands us stead the rest of our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now when we're in the drop-in, sometimes we talk a lot of really important discussions, and sometimes we talk a lot of nonsense. <laughs> and the other day there, we were having a discussion about the solar system, <coughs> and uh, we were talking about how thick the rings in Saturn are, do you see? And, uh, well, the rings around Saturn, the diameter is of course immense, it's bigger than the planet itself. But according uh, to the scientists, the actual thickness <coughs> of the rings only goes to about uh, 30 metres wide. So although they're big and long, they're actually very, very shallow. You could get up to the top of them with a big stepladder. David knows all about getting up my stepladder. But anyway... As the wee woman said in the garlic gate, what's that got to do with the price of mince? <laughs> and you know, and a lot of wise sayings have been said in Glasgow. And that's a very wise saying. What has that got to do with the price of mince? In other words, you can debate and talk about it till the cows come home, but what's it got to do with me? The price of mince is to do with how it affects you, your life. Does it affect my life? In actual fact, if... Saturn's rings were a bit thinner or a bit thicker. It really doesn't make much odds to me. It doesn't make much odds. So a lot of statements are made in life. And we just read a statement 
that uh, Paul wanted to make to this young fella. Do you know that some cats are actually allergic to humans? You know there's people allergic to animals. But in actual fact some cats are allergic to humans. Did you know that? Well the truth of the matter is they're not really allergic to the humans at all. It's their perfume or their aftershave that cats are allergic to. <laughs> So there you are. So if you've got a cat, uh, and Cathy knows what I'm talking about, you need to watch what perfume you wear, because some cats don't like. And there's all sorts of things we could talk about. And uh, air fresheners. Air fresheners. They don't like air fresheners. No. There you are. See, we have, uh, we have a backup to these silly statements. Do you know what the blob of toothpaste that sits in your toothbrush is called? You know it's got a name. When you put toothpaste on your toothbrush, it's actually got a name. What do you call that, that blob on your toothpa or toothpaste? Well, it's actually called a nurdle. You put a nurdle of toothpaste on your toothbrush. So, a nurdle. I don't know if you got a nurdle of butter. Maybe that's what Stuart was trying to tell us about. <laughs> Sounded more like a hurdle. Sounded more like a hurdle. He was trying to get over it. But you see... There are all these things in life and uh, do you know that every muscle in the human body has got two connections except one muscle. There's only one muscle that's only got one connection to a bone and that's the one I'm waggling about just now. Your tongue is the only muscle in your body that hasn't got two connections. It's only got one connection. Another one is uh, available to roam about free. Some people wish it did have another connection to, to slow it down a wee bit. So there's all sorts of stuff that we see, but they don't actually affect the price of mints, as the women would say. They don't make any difference to your living, to your life. Well, you know, there are statements that do make a difference to your living. And we are reminded today, when we read this scripture, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Now, trustworthy is, I'm not telling you a lie here. I'm telling you something that you can depend on. Something that you can uh, put your weight on. Now, at the moment, I don't know, we had a woman at the door in the afternoon representing a political party, a political party, and she was going to tell us statements. And we're listening to them on the television, and... They say, how do you know when a politician's telling lies? And the, user, the joke is, their mouth is moving. <laughs> and what, in other words, what they're saying is, we're going to be inundated with all sorts of statements. If you vote for me, this is what's going to happen. If you vote for the other party, this is what... And they're going to make promises, 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 promises. And you know the truth is, after all is said and done, there's a lot more said than done. The proof of the pudding's in the eating, that's a statement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after December, when one, this party's in that promised the earth, will it actually happen? And, of course, the track record of a lot of political parties is, uh, well, it didn't happen because, and often you can't really say it's a trustworthy saying, it's definitely going to happen. Well, lots of good statements. Uh, my father had statements. He used to say things, some of them I never really quite understood, but I found them interesting. When he got angry, he used to say, and the name is some big hoose in Ireland. And then he would tell you to uh, whatever you were doing wrong. That was, a, that was a, let you know he was going to be angry. If he said, and the name is some big hoose in Ireland. And obviously, I've heard other people say that and they always had a, a heritage that came from Ireland. So I don't know where the big hoose in Ireland was that had the seat of authority, but he used to say that as if to say that was an authority behind what he was going to say. But one of the things my father used to say, and it was his motto for living, was live and let live. That was his saying, and that was his philosophy in life. In other words... You don't stop people choosing what they want to choose to do. And of course, that's what we call democracy. Now, there are some religions that don't do that. There are people who at the, put a thought to your throat and say, you do our religion or else 
you, we take your head off. And that's been happening right up to recently. And we don't need to name them. You all know who I'm talking about. But there are statements that are good advice. For example, live beneath your means. That's good advice. The credit card companies want us to live above our means or otherwise spend more money than you're earning. And that is bad advice. There are other bits of good advice. One is return everything you borrow. And a better bit of advice is don't borrow anything. Then you don't need to return that. And I wonder how many of us in here have got something in the house that we borrowed and never took back. Now, don't put your hands up. You will take confessions at tea time. When I was thinking about this, I think about a guy that loaned me a drill about 40 years ago, and he never, I never gave him it back because I'd never seen him. And it was a rotten drill anyway, but, <clears throat> but it always bothered me. I never gave this fellow his drill back. Stop blaming other people. That's a good one, isn't it? Somebody once said to me, try and go through a day, one day without saying something critical. Try and go through one day without, it's difficult. If you tried it, go through one day without saying something critical. It's really hard. Do something nice and try not to get caught. Have you ever done that? Done something nice but you didn't want them to know it was you that did it. That is a really nice thing to do. Keep them guessing. You know, who put that money in the post, who done that, who done that. These are good wee things to do. Take a 30 minute walk every day. Be on time. Don't make excuses. Just accept the blame. <laughs> okay? Take the flack. Don't argue. You can discuss without arguing, you know. Get organised. That's one I need to learn about. Be kind to people. Be kind to unkind people. That's a hard one. Take time to be alone. Sometimes you need your own space, is that right? Mm -hmm. Develop good manners. Be humble. <clears throat> Realise and accept that life is not fair. Know when to keep your mouth shut. Learn from the past. Plan for the future, but live in the present. Now that's all good bits of advice. And they'll help you in this life. Now... But what advice will help us in the life to come? And here Paul gives it here. He said, listen, here's a trustworthy saying. Here's something you can not just put your life upon, but put your soul upon. It deserves full acceptance. This is a worthy saying. This is get merit. Take this on board and don't reject it. Accept it. Take it. If you leave here tonight, you've learned this one thing. You've learned a good thing. This is worth you knowing about. And here it is, and he's talking to this young man called Timothy, and this is what he says. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You know, a lot of people in churches think that they are good people, and so they're going to heaven. And the sinners... Well, you know, Jesus had trouble when he walked on the earth. The Pharisees, who were self-righteous people, they had no time for the sinners. And Jesus tells the story about two people who came into the synagogue. And one was a Pharisee, and he stood and said a prayer. And he said, I thank you, Lord. I'm no like this guy here. I do this, I, give, I tithe to this, I do this, I do the next thing. And he rhymes off to God all the good things that he is. And this publican, this uh, man who was a sinner, comes in and he beats his breast and he says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus says, who do you think left that place justified? Who do you think God heard? He heard the sinner. He heard the sinner who admitted that he needed God. And he drew near to him and he met him. And Paul says to Timothy, this young fellow, he says, look, one saying, if you get this, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 
He didn't come into the world to save good people. Well, the actual fact that there are no good people. In fact, the Bible teaches everybody's sinned. And those that think they haven't sinned are sadly mistaken. And when we recognise that we are sinners, that we've all offended God, we've all shot, fallen short of his mark, that we can cast ourselves on the mercy of Jesus and he will give us salvation. He will give us salvation. And then Paul says, what's my credentials for talking like this? He says, I'm the worst of sinners. And the Christians all knew it. Because Saul was a man who used to persecute the Christians. He used to round them up and jail them. And one day he had an encounter. He had an encounter. He met the Lord for himself. And the Lord transformed him. Instead of fighting against the Christian cause, he became one of the greatest Christians that ever lived. And his message is still as simple today as it was then. Christ Jesus came into this world. Now we're talking about Christmas coming up. We're talking about Jesus coming into the world. Jesus left his heavenly throne and came into this world as a child and grew up for one purpose. That he might save sinners. He might save sinners. And Jesus is still saving sinners today. All we need to do is recognise that we have offended Almighty God. We've sinned against God. But he died on a cross. He let his blood be spilled out his body to pay a price that we couldn't pay. He took the penalty on his body. He took it for us. That we don't need to die and go to hell. We can go to heaven. Because he loves us. He came to save us. And save means really save. It means to deliver. It means to take you out of the danger. Out of the, the threat that's against you. And give you peace. Now a lot of things we've been talking about tonight. Are about trusting God. Living at peace. Knowing peace. Not knowing anxiety. Knowing that God is with us. And God is on our side. We've heard all that in testimonies tonight. And to know God. Is to know peace. But remember if you forget everything else. All these silly statements. All these clever statements. All these good statements. But don't forget this one statement. Because it's worth. It's worth the acceptance, full acceptance. And it's trustworthy, it's faithful. It won't let you down. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And that's what you need to know. And he died on the cross to save you. So you're not a Christian tonight. We'll pray with you if you want to trust Jesus and know the peace that we're talking about. That's what we're in the business of being church for. That people might know the Saviour. Isn't God good tonight? <laughs> Now we're going to close our service with a time of fellowship. We're going to sing this wee song. Jimmy's going to uplift an offering. We always uplift an offering. If you haven't come prepared, don't worry. Just let the bag pass you by. It's just to pray for the heat and the light. And uh, we're going to um, sing this wee song. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. <coughs>
When you ask if Alec would close in prayer, Alec, please. Heavenly Father, we come before you.